Hello YouTube, this is Richard, founder of ShortTermRentalSecrets.com and Airbnb Superhost. Today's video is what you should think about when buying your first Airbnb home. Now obviously this applies to all short-term rentals and different platforms like VRBO, HomeAway, Booking.com and so on, but let's get started. Let me just say, you don't have to have the money or even the commitment to go out and buy a place to get started on Airbnb. You can do it with the sleeper sofa in your living room, you can do it with the spare bedroom, it doesn't really matter. But let's just assume that you're having a lot of fun with it, you're making money, you like the side gig and you want to get more involved and you want to buy a rental property. Here are the things that I look for. Proximity is really important. You're going to be hands-on, you're going to be involved, you're going to want to make sure that the maintenance and the um, care of the property is to your standards. So I think proximity is really important to where you currently live. So by way of example, if you live in an urban area like Chicago, I would recommend the very first place to be in or around Chicago in the suburbs just so that you can like drive there and take care of stuff. But if you live in a more touristy area, it doesn't have to be in your exact community. I would probably pick a place that's within driving distance, maybe 40 minutes or less, maybe an hour or less, whatever you're comfortable with, um, but that gets that increased demand and is going to generate more revenue. So let me just say, these are just suggestions. You don't have to follow this script like line by line, but we want to get your first property successful and cash flowing so that you have some money, you're having real good time with it, and maybe you want to get a second or third property. For me, now that I'm doing my 15-year plan, I'm intentionally looking for some of the things that I'm advising against. Like, I'm picking places that I want to go to, and the fact that it's hard to get to is kind of cool, but I'm experienced and I have that infrastructure, and it's something that I want to do as part of a portfolio. But for your first one, let's just keep it really simple. Let's get some cash in your pocket, and let's grow and get the second and third underway. So let's remember that in real estate, location, location, location is the only thing that you really care about. So let's try and figure out where people are actually already going and why they're going there. Think about business reasons, think about travel and tourism, amusement parks, the beach. These are areas where people are already going and you just want to capture some portion of it. This isn't the time for you to take like the best home in an unknown neighborhood and try and get it discovered because this is your very first rental property, so you want to make sure that it's cash flowing. Let me give you an example. If there's a beach community that everybody goes to and it's, you know, call it two hours outside of a city, you want to try and buy a home as close or within that beach community as possible. Don't pick a less expensive place like Midway and hope that other people see the value and want to travel an hour to the beach. Try and get as close to the beach as possible, even if it's smaller, but you want to get in on the demand that already exists as opposed to creating the demand. The third thing I want to talk about is perhaps a little bit scary to you, but I want to reassure you it shouldn't be scary. It should be embraced, and it's a critical part of like thinking about where you're going to buy your Airbnb property, and that's the law. Now, the law is constantly changing and it's going to continue to change, but I believe firmly that over time the law is going to reflect the greater good and the greater demand, and Airbnb and short-term rentals are here to stay and becoming more and more important every single day. And so while the law might be scary, think of it as your friend. If you know what the law is, then you can actually embrace it and adhere to it and operate legally. So it's a good thing. Now, when you're thinking about your property, especially your very first one, you want to be really caught up to what the laws are, I recommend you use a Google search and just put Airbnb laws in the name of your community or the city or whatever. And then to take it one step further, go ahead and create a Google alert with that town and the same search because it'll give you updates every single day. And buying a property isn't an overnight thing. It could take you three months, six months, heck, even a year. To be clear, this isn't illegal because we're breaking the law and we're bad people or anything like that. There's a lot of constituencies that are worried about it, like the hotel and lodging people, uh, the taxation bureau. What we see happening is hosts are becoming better, screening guests better, less parties, less of those nightmare scenarios. And then it really just becomes a financial thing, like how much taxes do you pay and how many nights can you do it and there just needs to be some civility brought to it where it was the wild west as always happens in like disruption over time it transitions into more normal and common and the laws help do that and so you want to find a place where there's a lot of opportunity the laws already being you know communicated and channeled and in fact one of the things that i look for when i buy a property is do they collect taxes 
on Airbnb rentals. If they do, that's fantastic because the community's embraced it and they need it for things like schools and road repair and so on. So like that's actually a net benefit. So the next thing I want to talk about is finances. I understand that this might be first and foremost in your consideration and it is in mine too, but I wanted to cover those other items first because I think they're really important. But turning to finance, look, obviously you know what your finances are, you know what you can afford, um, you know what's prudent. There's all sorts of online calculators to help you work through some of that. But let's just talk about a few things to think about, like price appreciation. What's happened in the market? Are the, is the prices you know, really high at their all-time highs? I personally don't care so much about that because I'm not really making the investment for price appreciation. That's a fringe benefit. What I'm actually making the investment for is more cash flow. And the way to analyze that is how much is it going to cost you? What is your mortgage going to be? And then what sort of rental income can you anticipate? And the best way to gauge that is two things. One, take a look at Airbnbs in the area, how much do they command, and then apply some reasonable occupancy rate. I would suggest somewhere between 60 and 80% is what we see good hosts getting, and make sure that that's you know, seasonally adjusted and cyclical. So for instance, if it's just renting during the summer, realize that you're gonna have nine months of vacancy, and that might not be a good idea. Try and find a place that rents year round, try and find a place that rents at least two seasons, maybe it's good for summer and winter, like my place in Colorado, um, but try and take a look at what it's going to generate in terms of income and assume a 60 to 80 percent occupancy rate and that'll give you one idea. The second way that I approach it is take a look at contact a broker and ask them what a similar property would rent for. And let's just assume it rents for a thousand dollars a month. The framework that I use generates about two to three times that long-term rental. So you can anticipate about two to three thousand dollars a month in rental income using that example. So another consideration is infrastructure. You want to make sure that property you're buying has like services and conveniences around it because while I said earlier that you may be willing to drive an hour to go and check in on the place and so on to get to that like beach community, um, if that beach community is really desolate or only accessible by ferry or something that makes it really cool but really challenging, realize that it's going to be really difficult for you to get maids there, plumbers there. Um, they may not be willing to travel an hour, and if they are willing to travel an hour, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So my last tip is really important. It needs to fit into your lifestyle. It needs to be part of your vision. In short, it needs to be part of your why. And so let me give you a very personal example. About 20 years or so ago, I bought a real estate property that I thought was really interesting from a financial perspective. I thought the neighborhood was up and coming. Um, it wasn't exactly anywhere that I would normally go to, but it was close enough, and so I looked at the numbers and I made that investment decision, and I, I bought the property. And turns out I was right. If I'd held the property for 20 years, I would have made a lot of money in terms of appreciation, but I couldn't hold the property for 20 years because it didn't fit my lifestyle, it wasn't where I wanted to go, I was never in the neighborhood, and every time I went there, it was a chore and it became a job, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't conducive to what it was that I wanted to be doing. So instead, if I had taken that amount of money and bought some place that I you know, happened to be near or around or I like going to on the weekends, like let's say I go there, I do some work, and then I go for a bike ride or a walk, then I would be still holding that property and I'd actually make that appreciation. More likely, I'd own it outright and it would all be like free cash flow, which would be fantastic. So it's really important to understand what your why is and make sure that it's you know attributable to it. So I want to riff on this a little bit more because it's super important and I think it's helpful to everybody. You really have to understand what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it because that gives you the, the persistence and the capability to like endure and persevere. And so let's just use this YouTube channel as an example. I really believe in Airbnb. I really believe in my 15-year plan. It's changing my life and I want to help other people and like change other people's lives. So if I have some ability to give a little bit of tips and education, I love doing it and the feedback that we're getting now is really encouraging and rewarding and like that's what keeps us going. But by way of example, you know, the first five months that we did this YouTube channel, we didn't even have a hundred subscribers and those were dark and lonely and quiet days and you sit there and you say like, what am I doing and why? But the reality of it is I believed in it so I kept doing it. And then if you take a look at the more recent results, in just the last couple of months we've gone from that zero to 105 months to 100 to almost a thousand in what, like two months? in two months, and I think we're just getting started, right? If you take a look at some of the comments, people are suggesting we should have 10,000 subscribers, and I'm sure that's to come. But however long that takes is okay, because this fits my why. 
If it didn't, I would have quit. So this was really general and not applicable to you specifically. I'm sure you have tons of questions. And the good news is we have a community that's filled with expertise on our Facebook group. So just come check out the Facebook group. The link is in the description below. We'd love to have you over there. Please like the video if you found it helpful. Leave comments and feedback. But most importantly, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do it. Thanks so very much. Have a great day.